All right, so now that we've added a few components to our project, we already have a dist directory with a few bundles. It would also be nice to actually test them out. In fact, if you go back to the presentation that we've talked about a while back, we mentioned that one of the important aspects of a successful project is that it also provides sample demos to the user. Now, in this case, of course, if we go back to the build process, we are currently at the build stage. So we actually skipped over the test stage. So it'd be nice to actually go back to it and work on unit tests. And it's in fact a very good time to do it because now we have actual code that we can test. But for the time being, before we actually set up any of the tests, let's make sure that the build that we've created is actually working properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new directory. Let's call it examples. And now what do we want to do for examples? Well, as I said before, we have three different bundles. We have a CommonJS bundle, an ESM bundle, and a UMD bundle. And now we can start off with the CommonJS bundle. And this one is usually going to be used in Node.js using server-side rendering. So we might as well call it SSR which is short for server-side rendering. So let's actually go back to the terminal. I'm gonna to switch to examples SSR. So I'm gonna initialize a repo over here. Let's go back to our editor. In fact, I'll remove most of the things in here. So we have to keep in the name and the version. I'll keep in main as well. So for the scripts, let's just do start. And now this will be a simple start command. So we're gonna do node on the index.js file like this. So what we could do is in this project, we can actually set up index.js file. And imagine that in this project, we don't have any build setup. So all we can really use is the common JS syntax of require and export. So let's actually do a require statement of react. So let's do react. We'll require react. Of course, we're going to have to install it. So let's do npm install react, lowercase, of course. So now we have the react dependency, but we also want to install our project. So this is going to be react CSS spinners, and we're going to require it as well. Now to install it, of course, we haven't published it to NPM yet. So you can't do something like NPM install, let's say react CSS spinners, right? Because that dependency doesn't exist yet. So one thing you could do is you can actually install a dependency that is relative to the current folder. So if you go two levels up, right? So if you do like CD two periods, it's going to bring you to examples. If I go back to SSR, if I CD two times, like that. So it's going to bring me back to React CSS spinners, which in fact is a project. So this one has a package.json file. So this one, in fact, is already a module which we can import. So if I go to examples SSR, so what we can do is we can npm install whatever is contained within the parent directory. So I'm going to go two levels up. So this will, in fact, will install our dependency. And if you don't trust me, you can go to node modules and you're going to see React CSS spinners in there. It contains all the source code for the time being. And now we're going to go back to index.js and we're going to import React CSS spinners, which pops up right now because at the time being, it's actually a dependency of this project. On the same note, we can actually install Express. So let's do npm install Express like that. Let's also import Express. So I'll require express like that. And then we can set up a constant of app. In fact, let me put it in here. And so we'll have a single route. So we'll match everything and we'll just have a callback function, which will accept a request and response. So for the response, we're going to send something. So it's going to be a string spoiler alert. And now finally, we're going to do app listen. So let's also set up a constant. So again, this is just some basic express stuff. So let's set up a port 3000, for example, and so we could listen on port 3000. So I'll pass it as a variable. I'll pass any callback. Let's do a console log. This way we can output the local host as well as the port. And then the last thing we need to install actually is we need to install React DOM. So in this example, we're gonna do some very basic server-side rendering. So I'm gonna actually import React DOM. I keep saying import, but in fact, we're actually just requiring them using CommonJS. But I hope you guys understand. So in fact, what we need to do is we need to somehow output one of our spinners. So now if we look at our source folder, let's say we want to import the Ripple component. So I'm going to import Ripple from this library. Once again, what this is going to do is it's actually going to import the React Spinners dependency using the CommonJS bundle. And in fact, this is going to point to the main field in our main module, which I think I forgot to modify. So in fact, what this needs to be is the main field has to point to the CommonJS bundle. So once again, we are distributing several bundles. There's one for CommonJS, one for ES modules, and one for UMD. Because it's an NPM dependency, we have to fall back to the CommonJS syntax. 
vertex. So in fact, the main field, which in essence points to the entry point of your module, and every module has to have it. In this case, we have to point to an actual file. So we're going to point to dist bundle.commonjs.js. So this will point to this file over here, bundle commonjs.js. And the reason, once again, that it has to be in commonjs is because we are distributing code through NPM. So we can't necessarily tell exactly how the integrator is going to use this module. They might be using it with Webpack, with Rollup. They might be using it without any build process at all. So we have to make sure that we fall back to the commonjs syntax at all times because this one is going to be the most stable one among the three. We are also distributing the ES modules, of course. And now if you wanted to import the ES modules instead, what you could do is you could also specify another key. This one is going to be module. And on the contrast, this one is going to point to dist bundle.esm.js. So this one is going to point to this file instead. So what is the difference? Now the difference is that we want to enable tree shaking in this module. But tree shaking is only possible with ES modules, so ES6 modules, but it's not really possible with CommonJS. We have to fall back to CommonJS once again because we are still part of the NPM ecosystem. But if the end user has a build setup, for example, with Webpack using something like Create React App, they will want to use ES modules instead of CommonJS syntax. And this is why we will also distribute the module or bundle.esm file. And now for Webpack specifically, we can also specify a key known as side effects, and we simply have to set it to false. And this one is going to tell Webpack, and Webpack only, not rollup, not parcel, it's going to tell Webpack that this module doesn't have any side effects. So it's safe to use the ES modules, and it's safe to actually apply tree shaking to this module. Because all of our components are independent, there's really no side effects being applied to any of them. So if you import, let's say, the ellipsis, the ellipsis doesn't have any side effects to the ripple component. They're completely independent. So it's safe to actually apply tree shaking and eliminate the dead code which you're not importing in your project. So if you really only want to import ellipsis, ignore any other components in this repo, it's going to import the ellipsis component through the module field. Now if you're curious about these fields, of course you can simply google them. I'm going to tell you that Webpack has a resolution algorithm. So I'm going to look for resolve main fields and hopefully we're going to find it in a documentation. So if I look for main fields, this is going to show you the defaults that Webpack is going to apply. So as I said, there's different fields that you can specify in your package JSON file for your module. There's one that's called main. This one is the mandatory one. You always have to include it in your module. There's one that you can include, which is called module. This one points to the ES modules export. The other one would be the side effects. This one is only related to Webpack. But besides that, there's also another one known as browser. So if you want to make a distinction, let's say between a server side bundle and a client side bundle, this one could point to something like bundle.client .js and this one would be intended for browsers. And so this way, for example, in the main field, you could have a bundle dot server .js. So this one would be intended to be used in node and the other one specified under the browser key would be intended for client side or for browsers. And so as you can see here, depending on what target environment you set in your Webpack config, it's going to go through a different field in the package JSON of every dependency. So for example, let's say you set your target to web. And in fact, it's also going to fall back to web if you don't specify the target. So let's say you set the target to web. In that case, Webpack will go through every single dependency and it's going to look through the fields in package.json of each dependency. And then it's first going to look for the browser field if it exists in package.json. If it does, it's going to use that script. So for example, in this case, it'd be using the bundle.client.js file. Now that key might not be present. So if it's not, it's going to look for the module field. So this would be the bundle.esm.js file in this case. And if that one is not present, it's always going to fall back to the main field. And as I said before, the main field is always going to be included. So this in fact is a legacy, you could say field, and it's included in every single project published in NPM. In fact, you can't publish a project without the main field in it, because the main field is always a fallback to the common JS syntax. So you have to make sure to use the common JS require and exports syntax in that main file. And now for any other target, including node, it's going to look first for the module field and then for the main field. And so this is why it makes sense to add the module field here. So once again, I'm going to bring it back to what we had. So we'll have the main field as a fullback for common JS syntax. We'll have the module field with the ES modules, and then we'll have the side effects set to false. I'll just mention briefly that in the past, there was also a JS next colon main field 
in package.json files, but it was since deprecated in favor of the module field. And in fact, it was acting in the same exact way. So now that we have this, let's actually go back to the terminal. And in here, I'm going to do an npm install once again. So this way, it's going to reinstall all the dependencies, including our module. So just to double check, we can go back to examples. If I look at node modules, we're going to find our React CSS spinners, which is linked back to our project. And in this case, if you look at package JSON, it's going to have the same exact fields that we've just specified. And so back in our server side example, what we want to do is we want to import, let's say the ripple component. And what I was trying to explain is that first of all, it's going to import the entire module and then it's going to extract the ripple property out of that object. So the ripple will become a component that we can actually use. And if we had a build process set up in this project, we would probably just use the JSX syntax. But assuming that we can't, we could do something like this. So let's say we'll have a React element. So we're going to call React.create element. So we'll just do the JSX syntax ourselves. So once we have the element, we could do React DOM dot render to string. In fact, in order to do that, we also have to put slash server to the end of our import. So this way we're going to be importing react dom slash server for server side rendering. So this way we could do render to string like this. And as you can see, we get autocomplete as well. So it looks like we are on the right path. So we're going to put in const HTML of that and we'll put in the element inside. In fact, I'll just put it in directly. And now we're going to be sending over some HTML. So let me just quickly create an HTML file. So I'll put an HTML5. I just want to copy the markup. So once that's done, I'll delete it. And I'm going to put it in over here, the markup. So we really only need the character set, let's say. So I'm going to put in the HTML in here as a variable. So this will be the HTML string that we've just generated with that component, by the way. And so it should already include the CSS in it. And now as far as the dependencies go, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all of them with the latest ones. So let's just do latest like that. I'm just going to reinstall everything. So in fact, I'm just going to remove the node modules and also the package lock just in case. So let's do npm install once again. Now, if you try running it like this, you're actually going to run into an error that says cannot find module react. And this, of course, is confusing because in our SSR example, we already have React as a dependency. So in order to go around that issue, what we can do is we can go back to our root directory. We could do npm install react dash dash no save as a temporary workaround. So we just have to install React at the root of the project. So I'm going to switch back to examples SSR. So now if we do npm start, so this will start the development server. And as you see over here, we get our first spinner. Now just to simplify it a bit, I'm actually going to destructure render to string. Also from React, I'm actually just going to extract create element like this. We can of course import, let's say ellipsis, just to double check. And as soon as we restart, let's refresh and we get the ellipsis. And finally for the ring, I'm going to restart the server, refresh and we get the ring. All right, so that looks good to me. That was a good example. But let's also add another one. So I'm going to add one for create React app. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the server. So I'm going to go up one level and I'm going to do npx create react app and I'll call it CRA for create react app. So now let's go to that directory. And now once inside the repo, what we're going to do is we're going to yarn add our dependency. Now, as you can see, this repo is private by default. And in fact, we're going to do the same exact thing for the server side example. It's going to be private as well. So this way we won't publish it by accident to NPM. And now let's go back to CRA and let's delete some of these files. So the test files, the CSS, I don't need any of those ones. So let's delete them. And now an index, we're just going to import a few things. So we'll import React. React DOM. Now, if I go back to package JSON, I'm going to remove this entry. So we're going to be using the same ESLint configuration as we have in our project instead. So now that I save it, it's going to format it to the standard syntax. And on here, there's quite a few things we can remove. So let's just return an ellipsis. We're going to import it in a second. So let's import an ellipsis from React CSS spinners. We can save it. Now back in the terminal, let's try yarn start. And in this case, we actually get a warning due to ESLint. So there is a mismatch of versions. Just to skip that step really quickly, we're just going to put in this variable in here to the start script. So it's going to be skip preflight check set to true. Now this syntax once again will be different on the Windows systems. You might have to Google that. But on macOS and Linux, it's going to be variable name equals sign and then the value. 
So let me clear it out. Let's try yarn start. And as you can see, we get our spinner on the left hand side. So I'm just going to update the readme very quickly. So I've added some details for the create react app example. Basically, you need to run the yarn command and then yarn start to start the server. And I did the same thing for the SSR example. So you have to do npm install and then npm start to start the server. And then I left a note to not to forget to hydrate the app client side because right now we're basically just embedding it into the body, but there's no hydration happening on the client side so you would need to also include the react client side bundle as a separate script but that's something to do on the side the purpose of this example is really just to show you that the react css spinners dependency is working correctly and in this case once again it's using the common js bundle so we verified common js we verified the es modules in fact this create react setup is actually going to use the es modules bundle from our this directory, this one. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up an example for the UMD bundle. So we might call it UMD, but because it's probably going to be pulled from a CDN, we can just as well call it CDN. So in this case, we're gonna create a simple index.html file. Let's create a quick boilerplate for the title. Let's say CDN example. I'm also going to go back to pretty or ignore, and I'm going to add an ignore condition for all HTML files. So this regex is going to match all HTML files. I want to also ignore the contents of this file as well. And so let me bring back to what it was before. So now if I save it, it won't be formatted. So I can add a script at the bottom with a source. So what we can do in this CDN example is we can pull in React from a CDN. Let me go to react.js.org. We're gonna switch to the docs. Let's go to CDN links. So what we can do is we can copy these two guys over here. These ones are gonna point to the production builds of React and also React DOM. And then the last thing would be to reference our dependency. So because we haven't published on NPM yet, eventually it's going to be a link that looks something like this. So we're gonna reference our React CSS spinners at version one. But because we haven't published it, like like I said, we're going to reference a local script for the time being. So what I'll do is I'll go back to terminal. Let me go to the CDN example and I'm going to npm install our own module. So this way, what we can do is we can reference the node modules directory, node modules slash react CSS spinners slash dist slash bundle dot umd dot js. So once that's done, let's add a div. We can add an ID to it. So this could be something like, let's say, container. And finally, we'll add a script. If you remember, we have a special configuration for the umd bundle. In this case, we're exposing a global React CSS spinners. So let's do a const. So we're going to have an ellipsis component out of it. So we can do window dot React CSS spinners. So in the end, we can also have a container. So let's do document get element by ID container. And finally, we're going to say react dom dot render. So we'll pass in react dot create element of ellipsis and we'll pass in the container as the second argument. All right. So from this directory, we're going to do npm init dash y. So we're going to install our dependency from outside. And after that, let's do npm install a dev dependency of serve. This is just so that we can serve up index HTML file statically from a local file system. But to serve it, we're gonna use the serve dependency. So let's do npx serve. So let's visit the link. And as you can see here, we get the spinner as well. So once again, this was really just to verify that the code that we're generating in the dist folder is actually still runnable. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a readme.md to the CDN example. And once again, you can grab it from the actual repo. And once again, I'm gonna remove some of these fields over here. So we don't need any of this stuff. I'm only going to make it private as well. So let's do private true like that. So that should be good to go for now. So I'm going to commit all the files. So let's go back to the terminal. I'll go back to the root. So let me clear it out. So let's do get status. So let's add everything in source. I'll add pretty or ignore package.json package lock json roll up config forgot the add. So now I'll get status again. We only have the examples. So I'm going to commit it the way it is right now. So let's do add CSS spinners like that. And now the second commit will be for the examples folder. So let's add examples. I'm going to commit at CDN CRA SSR examples. And finally, we're going to do a push. And that should be it for now.